Life should be an exciting adventure. It should never be a bore. A man should live fully, be alive. He should be glad to get out of bed in the morning. He should be doing a job he likes to do because he does it well. So we should make our time here an exciting adventure. The architect of the universe didn't build a stairway leading nowhere. And the greatest teacher of all, the carpenter from the plains of Galilee, gave us the secret time and time again. As ye believe, so shall it be done unto you. What gets you out of bed? What gets you off the couch? What gets you in the gym? It's not your alarm. It's not your parents. It's not your friends. It's you. The only one that can make it happen for you is you. I will not be outworked, period. Where I excel is ridiculous, sickening work ethic. If you don't have clear targets to shoot toward, you will miss every time. Set goals and then make plans on how you intend to achieve them. When they don't feel like it, they do it anyway. They work when no one is watching. Make it a habit to work your ass off and not to seek recognition or praise for your hard work. It takes discipline to change a habit because habits are formed a little bit each day, every day, every day. Once habits are formed, they act like a giant cable. They act like a nearly unbreakable instinct that only long-term disciplined activity can change. We must unweave every strand of the cable of habits slowly and methodically until the cable that once held us in bondage becomes nothing more than scattered strands of wire. It takes the consistent application of a new discipline a more desirable one to overcome one which is less desirable. It takes discipline to plan. It takes discipline to execute our plan. It takes discipline to look with full objectivity at the results of our applied plan. And it takes discipline to change either our plan or our method of executing that plan if the results are poor. It takes discipline to be firm when the world throws opinions at our feet. It takes discipline to ponder the value of someone else's opinion when our pride and our arrogance leads us to believe that we are the only ones with the answer. With this consistent discipline applied to every area of our lives, we can discover untold miracles and uncover unique possibilities and opportunities. So the question is, well, what can you do about your industriousness? And the answer to that is, well, that's kind of rough too, because there's a strong genetic component. But you can work on micro habits with regards to your conscientiousness. And I think the best micro habits, this is partly to do with this. So I think the best thing you can do with regards to your conscientiousness is to set up some aims for yourself, goals that you actually value. All right, you're gonna have to put some effort into your life and you need to be motivated to do that. And so, what are the potential sources of motivation? Well, you could think about them in, in the big five manner. You know, if you're extroverted, you want friends. If you're agreeable, you want an intimate relationship. If you're disagreeable, you want to win competitions. If you're open, you want to engage in creative activity. If you're high in eroticism, you want security. Okay, so those are all sources of potential motivation. You must now take action on what you found out. In doing business around the world, we call it game plan. Put together your game plan. One of the major things we teach on the weekend seminars, game plans. How to game plan your office. If you're in sales, you need a game plan. Kids need a game plan. You need a home game plan, social game plan, a business game plan. Everybody needs game plans. Financial independence, game plan. Your investment, game plan. Don't think in your head, put it on paper. Don't operate out of your mind. Operate from paper. And there's many kinds of wealth, I understand that, not just money. Money's one of the least of all values. I know some people with a lot of money that are very poor. Evita sings, as for fortune and as for fame, they are illusions. 
they're not the solutions they promised to be. So there's all kinds of wealth, but to get a big share coming your way, you've got to have a heavy action game plan. Now here's the third step to personal development, and we'll wrap up personal development. Step number three, it's just a little caution, and all through life we need little cautions. This one simply says, don't try to beat the system. Find out how it works, work it, but don't try to beat it. Some people learn just enough to start slicing it, shading it, thinning it, cutting corners, and looking for cheap answers. See, don't fall for that. You'll wind up with a cheap life. Find out how it works best and do it that way. It's like a muscle. Your brain has neuro muscles. Okay. Right? So if you think about, you know, we have, if we want to build our bicep muscle or our chest or our shoulders or our legs, we go to the gym, we do exercises, or we go and hike, or run, or bike, or walk, or, or, or do whatever it is. Well, what do you do to strengthen your confidence muscle? What do you do to strengthen your self-esteem muscle? What do you do to strengthen your tenacity or resolve muscle? What do you do um, to, to strengthen any of your core neuro muscles like awareness? How do you strengthen your awareness? How do you strengthen your ability to focus and stay laser um, uh, disciplined on an achievement of a goal? These are all neuro muscles that you can strengthen. So the first inner size that you teach anyway is kind of like learning the alphabet first. So take six, calm the circus. There's three foundational inner sizes we teach in the book. There's many more. But the first one is just to deactivate the stress reactive center in the brain. And you do that through six deep breaths in 10 second increments. So you take a deep breath in through your nose. And then as you blow out, pretend you're blowing out through a straw. So all of your energy is towards that focus, right? So three, two, one. You do that six times and we can see in brain scan images that the stress response center lowers and in many cases deactivates which throws blood back to the left prefrontal cortex. Your state of awareness increases, and then you can move to inner size number two, which is called AIA, A-I-A, which is now in a calm, relaxed state. Now, the first A stands for awareness of my thoughts, emotions, feelings, sensations, and what have been my behaviors for, let's say, the last five minutes or hour. Awareness without shame, blame, guilt, justification, or judgment. Pure awareness, calm state. Then what is my intention? Well, my intention is to be happy. I've been feeling sad. My intention is to be happy. My intention is to be focused, not scattered. Great, let, 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 me, let me write, give myself one or two intentions. Then the next A stands for what's one action to move me towards that. So if your intention is to be happy, why not look up and smile? Just look up and smile, because when you look up and smile, you release the neurochemistry of happiness, and you cannot look up and be angry, sad, mad, disappointed. You cannot. And if you look up and smile, we are wired to look up to heaven, let's say, and be hopeful. And we are wired that when we smile, the neurochemistry of happiness is firing through our bloodstream. And so if you just do inner size number one and two, now you get awareness and you calm down the circuits. And then if you learn inner size number three, uh, it's called actors, it's called um, um, actors, to, no, hold on a second. I'm losing inner size number three. Focus. Uh, it is called, uh, it'll come back to me in just a yeah. moment. But the, the, um, the third inner size is around, it's an actor's studio exercise. Basically, it's an inner size. So any actor in the world, can switch from being happy or sad or mad or disappointed or, or, or any modality of physiology that you want them to take on, they can command it on command, right? And so if somebody's unhappy, could you teach yourself to be happy in less than three seconds? And the answer is yes, if you chose to. So control of emotions. Control basically. of emotions. And so when we focus on the, the core emotions people have of happiness, sadness, shame, uh, disgust, contempt, love. Uh, we can learn how to switch between those on any given moment. But most people, what happens, they get caught up in this emotion 
energy in motion that's negative or disempowering, and then they think about how they feel, and they feel what they're thinking about, and they keep perpetuating the same pattern, and that's not where it ends, and this is where the problem lays, is if you do that on a regular basis, your brain says, since you're repeating this, uh, let me just make this um, you know, a habit, and I'll just create that on command for you, so you're in that state more frequently and then they don't know how to interrupt that pattern and create a new empowered state.